Hi everyone. Uh, so my talk's idea starts one day at my company while reviewing our ERN bonuses. This is a monetary compensation based on the accomplishment of certain objectives the company has. So as any good employee, I'll try to find a way to automate this thing. Oh, not working. Oh, okay. To automate this thing, <laughs> uh, let's find a way to minimize the work I have to do, but maximize the profit I, I could get from it, <laughs> obviously. So one of the objectives we had was to get 100% testing coverage in our product. And if we think this for a while, it seems that is, is an automatable metric. So I have this revelation that <laughs> Testing coverage is measured based on how many lines of your call are being executed when you run your test suite. So if we just delete every line that it's uncovered, that means that because the lines weren't tested or executed, my test will pass anyway. And because the lines don't exist anymore, we will get 100% coverage for free. <laughs> so, um, Yesterday in Nick's talk, we saw how to write programs that write other programs. And today I'll be talking about how to write programs that delete other programs, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so <laughs> to give an idea of what I expect my program to do, let's take this simple example. This is a simple if-else Python code. Uh, we will be using Python. and we see here that the S branch of my code is not being executed in my test, it's not covered. So what I would expect from this tool is to, given the source code of the program and the coverage information, to delete the else, the oops, and that is, this is not tested. That's no evidence of it. Or for example, we could have a function that its block can be tested, but it has some unreachable code in this Simple code, we can just remove the last two lines that we, we will have 100% testing coverage. So to do this kind of tool that involves source code transformation, I use the best tool at the shop to parse source code, that is uh, regular expressions. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, just kidding. Uh, please don't use regular expressions to parse source code. What I use instead was uh, abstract syntax trees or ASTs. Uh, an AST is basically a tree-based data structure designed to represent your source code. In this case, a simple hello world will be translated into a function call node where childs are for one side the function name and for another the arguments to the print function that in this case is a binary operation where children and are the hello and the world string. So simple enough, at least this AST. So just using the Python standard library, it is possible to, when I have this tree that is, it's a syntax tree, but it's a tree essentially. So this means I can work it and transform it just as we will do with any kind of tree. Uh, this simple code that you see here is trying to get the, pass this print hello world into an AST, then it will visit each node in the syntax tree, and when, when it sees some bin operation node, it will hard code the right part of it to the bang bang con string. So in this case, the print hello world thing will be translated into this hello bang bang con thing. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that the Python standard library has an AST module, but it doesn't allow me to transform, to convert, convert this transformer AST back into source code again. So for this, I had to use this Google library called Pasta. I wanted to mention it because the maintainers have been extremely supportive. I had to report many issues because what I was doing was apparently kind of strange. <laughs> so. <laughs> It I hit a lot of corner cases related to indentation. But the maintainers 
uh, help me a lot and fix it all bugs almost instantly. Um, so this is essentially what I had in my head and I wrote a project called Magico that does exactly that. Uh, it's free software, it's GPL licensee because we should use more copyleft licenses. And it's not so tiny as I would uh, expect before. I thought it was going to take me a few hours and it turned out to be way harder <laughs> because what I had to do is wasn't just removing the else of an if or removing the unreachable code, but I had to uh, deal with more complex AST transformations. For example, I had to deal with side effects in the, in the if test expressions, or I had to deal with the Python yield statement that because it transforms functions into generator functions, even when it is not tested, even with the yield line, uh, with the yield, uh, yield line is not executed, it will impact on your uh, source code. So I cannot just delete it. Uh, one thing I also found that was a bug in the Python coverage library that incorrectly reported my cover code as being uncovered. So when I deleted the line, my code broke because that was actually covered. And apparently this was related to a C Python uh, optimizer machine bug. I have no idea what I did, but eventually I, I fixed these issues and we got this project. So I think it's time for a demo. Hope this works. Um, here I have, can you see okay? Or maybe, uh, okay. Here I have a simple Python project I chose just because it has a fast uh, test suite. So I will run its test suite to see. Yeah, all tests are passing, just as we would expect. But if we, well, if we see the report, it has only 46% coverage. Hey, that's not good. My boss wouldn't be so happy, but we have Magico to the rescue. If we, oh, oops, I think I didn't have, okay, I will, <laughs> yeah. I want to avoid any misunderstanding of the tool, so <laughs> I just run this and, uh, oh no, Magico, what, what did you just do with my code? Uh, you messed it up. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of deleted lines. No, this can't be good. But if we run the test suite again, it, let's wait a few seconds. Oh, all tests are passing. <laughs> That's good. And if we see the report, then see. Whoa, all the percent has been covered. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have, yeah, I have time for one more demo. So if we think this tool, Magico, was designed using a test-driven development, so it has a pretty good test suite. If we <laughs> run it, it's see uh, all tests are passing, and it's the uh, 86% coverage. It's good enough, but not good enough for a 100% testing coverage talk. <laughs> so let's running the tool, yeah, here I have, I did some code deletions here, and if we see, this, oh, oh, I forgot to do, run the tool, no, oh, I didn't run the test, sorry, I have to run the test again, I see the report, and yeah, we just, <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, we just magical, magical, so, <laughs> So as I hope you got by now, uh, this tool wasn't really uh, designed to get a profit base to 
to get a profit. It, just, it was just an excuse to make a tool I... It's useless, but I... <laughs> yeah, it has no purpose, but it was really fun to do that. So what I want you to take from this talk is that the world is full of uh, rational, useful, pragmatic software, but that <laughs> doesn't mean you how to write useful software. <laughs> uh, this was really fun. I learned a lot of AST manipulation and source code transforming. And even if it's useless, I, I learned a lot. And I, it was really fun doing it. So I want you to encourage you to write useless software, more useless <laughs> software. Thank you very much.